I'm ready. Let's go live. One, two, three. I think we're live, Mr. Joe. Are we live? Are we live? Let us know in the comments. <laughs> yeah, Let's definitely see. let us know in the comments. How's everybody doing today? Good so morning, have, Jim. A uh, bunch of folks already in. Thanks for Absolutely. joining us on a Saturday morning. Yes. Good morning, Cody. Good morning, Jim. Good morning, Bob Carpenter. Welcome. Thank you guys for all being here. We got Marquez. We got Bob. Yeah. And Bob's in both streams somehow. Uncle <laughs> Joe, Marquez, walks it. He's walks it. I think you. Yeah. Walks it. Yep. <laughs> Good morning, wow, Watson. Awesome. Yes, he had put a comment in the chat earlier, um, like two or three hours ago, and we were talking in the chat, but then his chat got deleted somehow, which was strange. I didn't delete it, so I'm not sure how that happened. Really? So, it it yeah. somehow purged purged the chat Yeah. on us? So um, bear with me, everybody, because I'm kind of playing with four monitors here, and I got a lot going on, and I'll be trying to find out where my mouse is most of the time during the live stream. So if you see me looking in different places, now you know why. So yeah, and this is probably just more, you know, we're we're doing we're having fun today. We're having some casual, casual time. And Tony had a great idea to basically talk about some of the tools we like. You know, Tony's out on on job sites more than I am. I'm doing more home networking stuff, but uh but I, we have similar, you know, thoughts around it. So we figured, what the heck? Let's do a stream for everybody on a Saturday morning. Absolutely. So, um, by the way, guys, if you haven't already, make sure you join the uh, giveaway. We'll be giving away two Untwist tools today. Well, we're not giving them away today. We're opening up the entry period today. It's going to run for one week. So it's open now, and it's going to close next Saturday, March 13th at 1159 PM And then after the entry period closes, I'll do a drawing. We're going to pick two, two winners. So we'll be giving away two tools. And whether I do it in a live stream or just a recorded video, um, I'll post the winners after the entry period closes. So make sure you get down in the chat. We both posted the link to the entry uh, form. And it's also on my, my website too, quicktechsolutions.com. If you are watching this on demand and want to you know enter the uh giveaway so make sure you do that bob yeah, says and you mentioned flash. two tools so it's that's we probably should have called the stream two tools but that's <laughs> hey that's a good one yeah <laughs> two tools that we are so. um but yeah yeah and, and if you don't know what the untwist tool is you'll know, you'll learn later <laughs> yeah yep i guess we should reveal our special guest since uh <laughs> the giveaway kind of gave it away <laughs> So, yeah, I think that's a good idea. So go ahead, Joe. Let you, why don't you do it? Okay. Um, so so we actually have the, the the founder and creator of the Untwist tool. Tony actually turned me on to this Untwist tool. I had never heard of this thing for basically untwisting um, category cable, you know, the pairs of category cable. And uh, we got in touch with the guy. He's the one who you know gave gave Tony a few a couple of these for a giveaway. And he's actually going to join the stream. So we're going to pull him in. We're using Zoom and then you know broadcast it out. So it's nice and easy. We're going to pull him into the stream. He's going to demonstrate how to use this thing um, and give us you know just a little bit of information on the company. It's a small small business. We like supporting small businesses. And uh, yeah, it's a, it's a pretty cool device. Um, you know, Tony's used it more than I have. So, but we both have one here. Yep. I actually bought my first one. I, the first one I own, I bought and I used it on a couple of jobs. And I have to tell you, I fell in love with it immediately. It just saved my fingers uh, immensely. And I just was so excited about it. I just threw it out a couple of posts on social media and then Joe saw it. And actually the gentleman, Boris, who will be joining us later, he saw my post and, and that's how the uh, conversation got going. So uh, and that's what brought us to this idea of doing not only featuring the un, untwist tool, but featuring just a couple of other tools and installation aids that we kind of like that just make the job go easier. That's so. right. And, and I didn't actually strategically place this stuff, but it does look like one of those flat lay pictures you see in thumbnails with all my stuff swirled around me. But uh, but we have some top down cameras, too, because Tony's good with his uh, with his technology over there. So 
<laughs> you should be yeah. able to get a good picture of our stuff. So, all right, cool. So, do you uh, do you want to go first, Tony, with one one of yours, or sure, why not? Okay. All right. So the first one I'm going to show you. It's it's really simple. Um, I don't have it physically here, and you'll see why in a minute. But I'll bring it up on the the computer. It's the Harbor Freight fiberglass wire running kit. This is not the best quality kit. As you can see, it's only $9.50 US, $9 USD. But um, you get 10 sticks, 39 inches um, each stick. It comes with the flexible six inch hook and another end. You can put it all together and you get up to 33 feet of pulling capability. So it's great for uh, pulling through drop ceilings. It's great for pulling in the tight residential areas, especially when you're trying to get wires over to an eave. You can, you know how the roof lines just kind of taper down and you can't get my body in there, that's for sure. So we just send this in from the outside to someone in the attic, catch the wire, and it just makes life so super simple. So uh, again, let me just uh, bring that one up. It's the Harbor Freight model. It's nine bucks for the pack. And the, the great thing about it is if you break one or two or three along the way, like I said, they're not the, the best quality, but if you break them for, for nine bucks, you just get another set. I mean, they're just kind of throw away and repurchase. So one of my favorite tools and it just makes life easier. Yeah, that's incredible that they're so cheap. <laughs> Actually, we just had a Harbor Freight right down the road from us. So I'm probably going to pick one of those up because I've used the, uh, you know, one of these guys before, which is also fiberglass. But I think, I guess my question to you, uh, Tony, is using one of those fish sticks versus one of these reels. What's your experience on that? Would you, you rather use the sticks? So I don't have the fiberglass reel, I have uh, an actual metal real like an electrician's snake and what i find is in smaller areas where we just need to let's say fish a wire from behind a tv over a fireplace mantle down to a side cabinet where maybe there's an av receiver in short runs like that i find the actual reel works a lot better because it kind of curves to the position where you're trying to get to whereas opposed with the fish sticks they are flexible but um, I think the flicks for me, the fish sticks work better in longer pulls and in tight areas. So that makes sense. Yeah. So basically if you can't maybe have both, but yeah, the, by the way, and I've been calling this, um, fiberglass, but it actually says nylon fish tape, uh, right there. And this one's by Klein tools. These aren't super cheap. I mean, this one's a 50 foot, I think it's around $50 actually it might be even more for the nylon version, but the metal ones are usually a little bit, a little bit cheaper, but they're also heavier. Um, and not quite as, you know, you can't manipulate it as well. So, so anyway, yeah, I think there's probably a, a, a place for both of it, but I have used this a ton of times in, uh, in different things. You know, we, we run cables in the house, we run cables at the, you know, we do stuff with the dog rescue. We put in all kinds of cameras there and that's like a commercial building. Um, so there's, there's lots of cracks and crevices and things that, that it's not like a, you know, just a drop ceiling like I have here. So. So yeah, it makes your life a lot easier than if, if you if you're trying to run cables in a wall or in a ceiling and you don't have one of these, <laughs> you're it's going to be difficult. So. Oh, absolutely. A buddy of mine that I work with, he's an electrician that sometimes comes on some of the bigger jobs with me. Um, when he first saw the Harbor Freight model, because they're so thin, he looked at me and was like, "Are you kidding me?" Because he brought his out and they were glow in the dark and they were like twice the thickness and all. And his right. broke and one of his broke and, and mine didn't. And so I went, I could just buy a new pack for 10 bucks. <laughs> I, th so. I, I thought you were going to say that his are still in the ceiling because they got lost or something. <laughs> no, no. That's funny. But. We got a bunch of comments if we want to, you know, yeah. stop after each one of these in the chat. Absolutely. So let's see. Bob Carpenter says he's getting whiplash from going back and forth between the two channels. <laughs> Yeah, we're live on both channels for those who, who don't who don't know. And if you're not subscribed to Tony, go go subscribe to him. <laughs> Quick Tech Solutions. Thanks, Cody, for the congrats. Yep, we just turned 13k. Um, 
last week or the beginning of this week. And uh, yeah, really appreciate each and every one of you for um, supporting the channel over the years. I, I did launch a Patreon and Bob Carpenter, thank you for being my first patron. I uh, really do appreciate it. I didn't publicize it. I just kind of created it about two weeks ago and let it go. And then uh, somehow Bob found it the other night during Joe's stream. So uh, so I guess it's out there now. It's public. So, yeah, if you want to support the channel, uh, I do have a Patreon now. You don't have to. Um, I love doing what I'm doing, as I know Joe does. And uh, we do it for the passion as well as learning in the community together like we all learn from each other so uh yeah i appreciate each and every one of you absolutely yeah congrats i didn't realize it was kind of live so i'm gonna i'm gonna be joining that myself <laughs> um, um so let's see do 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 mac telecom says he's in both chats welcome i see jay shells isaac phils uh says i bought the client set from home depot for over 40 dollars uh, did you mean the client set with the fish, the fish sticks? Uh, they do have a client set, I think, of the fish sticks as well. But, but to Tony's point, you know, if you if you get, you could probably get four of the Harbor Freight ones, and then if you lose them, <laughs> right? Um, Marquez's fish tape gets hung up more. Alonzo, hey Alonzo, uh, metal ones get stuck in walls easily. Brian Murray, hey Brian, Unky Joe, I use something similar to the rods at the last commercial drop um, ceiling install, so much easier to use. Yeah, yeah, depending on what you do, you know, right tool for the right job. Irfan Sima, hey, how you doing? Thanks for joining. And Jay says, uh, Marquez, I don't have a channel, but want to create one, blah, blah, blah. Uh, there, there's a, they're going back and forth. So, so yeah, but, but like Tony said, we appreciate you all being here. Thank you for all being here. If you, uh, you know, we, so, so Willie Howe was just did his stream, which was a great stream. And then, we're doing this one. And then uh, Unky Joe's Playhouse is doing his stream at, at 1 p.m. Central. So you have a full day of, of the tech quartet. Actually, now we're called, what, what are we called now? The the, uh, the <laughs> nap, nap pack? <laughs> Something <laughs> so, like that. Yeah. <laughs> but but anyway. Uh, so what do you have next, Tony? Uh, let's see. Give me a sec. Another really simple, basic, basic. It's not a tool. It's, it's more of a, an aid. I, I look at it as an installation aid. Uh, for cutting in single gang boxes. So let me bring that up on the screen. So this is just a single gang template. It's got levels, horizontal and vertical. Let me see if I can get my upper, upper light on for a second. Hold on. And there it is. I mean, it fits in the palm of your hand. It's not big. And the nice thing about this is you just kind of Put it on the wall you're working on when you pick your location and just mark out the center and take your saw or your multi-tool or whatever. And it just makes getting that single gang box cut in for, you know, low voltage purposes, just so much easier than messing with like one of the new, the new work, uh, low voltage boxes and trying to take your pencil and mark around all the flaps and this and that and the other thing. I think this just makes it so much easier for 14 bucks. I uh, can't go wrong. It's one of my favorites. I'm not saying you have to use it. It's just something that I find that I really makes zipping through the, the site real, real quick and easy when you're cutting multiple holes. So I need to get one of those. Yeah, I definitely. Oh, and by the way, Tony has uh, um, affiliate links for these, right, Tony? Um, I'll put links in in the description for each each one and, and in the com and in the chat as well. Affiliates for everything except the Harbor Freight and one of the next tools I'll be showing. So gotcha. Okay, because I'm definitely gonna pick that up because I I've always used you know the the low voltage metal things with the little prongs that go into the, I've always like traced that but then it's not it's not really it's uh, it's not very accurate so that that looks really nice. The thing I learned with that tool, though, is just make sure once you've got your rectangle cut out that you cut out on the outer edge of your markings, not the inner edge with, with uh, your blade. Just stay on the outside edge and then your low voltage box goes right in. You don't have to mess with it and shave away and do all that stuff. So, you know, I have another question for you, Tony, on that. So so at one point I tried out what's called a roto zip. Have you ever tried that out to cut in cut in uh, boxes? I have, and it goes all over the world on me. So, um, yep, I returned mine. I, that's why yeah, I'm asking. It, it just goes all over. What I use is a, a multi-tool. You, fam, you, hmm. you familiar with a multi-tool? Yeah. 
Yeah. Um, I just take the multi-tool. Oh, oh, you're talking about the electric one, not not uh, like, you know, a Gerber or something. Yeah. A, ba- a battery operated. I got it. Got it. The uh, uh, with the, the little thing that goes like this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Let me, yep. let me see, if, see if I, while you're, go- while you're talking, let me see if I can bring one up. Yeah, I, I have a rigid one because when I built this room down here and it, and the thing is, unbel- I mean, you could just use it for everything. They have metal blades and wood blades and right. Um, yeah, and that thing, and, and you can hold it, and it doesn't jump all around on you. That's what I ended up. I, I had the roto zip first. If you don't know what the roto zip, it's basically, a, like a almost like a spinning blade where you're supposed to be able to go in and cleanly make like you know go into drywall and make like a a nice rectangle. Um, but every time I've done it, I've totally made the hole way too big, I screwed it up. Oh, so what, what do you have here? So that well, that happens to be Milwaukee, but I mean, they all the brands make them, and this is the 18 volt model. They make a 12 volt model, a 12 volt model, which is what I use because you don't need the power of the 18 volts for single gang box cutting. So, but that's it. It, it, yeah, compared to the Roto Zip, <laughs> I've done some damage with that, so this is much safer. Yeah. <laughs> that's cool. Yeah, mine's a, a plug in, so I I probably need a, a battery power at some point. So um okay so right. should i move to uh my next one go right ahead or, oh, or should we do the chat maybe we should do the chat in between sure let's see you want you want to do yours first i'm just see let's say bob carpenter says audio is great his ears are still sore from, from willie's hot mic earlier <laughs> <laughs> poor willie everybody's giving him a hard time about that <laughs> yeah he was clipping a little bit there but still the content is what's important right that's right that's right um unky joe says he he loves the levels on that one gang box cut off yeah super simple to use uh bob says although i was rather fond of the pretty packet princess pack (laughs) yeah yeah maybe that's that's what we should name ourselves uh jay says i'm redoing the basement today this so this is informative <laughs> that look at that yeah he definitely puts it alonzo says uh, no need for the six inch level right it's in there marquez says do they have a three gang box template like that have you seen a three gang i have not but i haven't looked either so while you're talking let me see if they have something like that all right for those who don't know the basically the gang is it's got, i don't know why it's called that but you know you have a regular plug with two plugs that's single gang and then double gang triple gang you know uh james says they make a one gang cutter for a multi-tool makes the cut super simple oh interesting okay i'll have to check that out i've looked for that i just can't find one for um uh, milwaukee to fit my multi-tool so I know they make one, uni- I've, I've seen a universal one on Amazon, but I'm just not quite sure it's going to fit my particular tool. But yes, those are great. Haven't used one, gotcha. but I, I've kind of salivated over them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to try that out. Yeah, I'm looking. Uh, let's see. Bob says, wow, combine that level with the wall cutout for the reciprocating tools. Yeah. Monkey Joe would fall asleep before I go. To- <laughs> you got Tony's, Tony's channel is uh Quick Tech Solutions LLC is the name of the channel. Uh, did it Roto Zip creates a lot of dust? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Willie did a review on the Qubit cutout tool for that. Bought them immediately. I'll have to check that out. I must have missed that. Maybe it was uh, before I knew Willie. I I found this. It's a double, but I haven't found the triple. But I guess if you, we keep searching, it's it's probably out there. Yeah. So. Anyway. Oh yeah, absolutely. I see. Ashley said, you know, make sure to like the streams. Thank you uh, for that. Yep, definitely like the streams. It helps us out. And uh, Marquez says he uses his Dremel for cutting boxes. Yeah, that's a, it's more of a, a fine fine cut. So, um, okay. So should I move Time. on to the next one? Yeah, We're at about we- eleven twenty. We're about eleven twenty. Yeah, let's do. Let's, let's keep going. What we, we told him about eleven thirty ish. We'll bring him in. Yeah, yeah. I think he's going to join at about eleven twenty five, and then we can bring him in anytime after that. So okay. Um. Okay. So let me switch over to this. So this 
sorry about the, the shaking. Ashley's uh, doing some exercise above upstairs and it's connected to the ceiling. Um, but anyway, th this is different people call them different things. Sometimes they're called uh, side cutters. If you talk to um, the wife, she calls them a, a cuticle cutter. Um, and, and she's currently shaking my camera. That's pretty funny. But anyway, the, these are very, very sharp um, and they're flat cuts. So if you if you have a, the edge of a like a um, category cable and you want to get a very flush cut right at the edge of like a keystone jack, you can use one of these and it'll do that versus just like a regular pair of scissors or something. You're, you're not going to get a really flush cut. Another thing these are really good for is when you're using a zip tie. So if you're, you're doing cable management and you have those ears hanging off the zip ties, you can get really close right up to the edge of where the zip tie comes together with one of these. I think this is like eight bucks on Amazon. This is a CHP brand looks like. Um, so I've bought a couple of these and they're, they're super sharp. They're great. I I've bought some of the more expensive, bigger versions with like, you know, th that are kind of true side cutters. Um, I haven't been, ha I haven't been as happy with them. Th these are really, you know, they could, I throw them in my back pocket and uh, when I'm going up the ladder or whatever I'm doing and, and they, they work out really well. So, so anyway, do, do you carry a pair of, uh, I forget that side cutters is one name. What's the other name for these things? So Joe, it's funny because we we didn't speak about what tools we were going to be showing. We just knew that we were each going to come to the stream with a couple of varieties of, of different things. I just bought last week a pair of the Milwaukee angled cutting pliers, like the little the angled nippers. And I was looking for the smallest pair I can get. And even the smallest pair that I found are still too big. And I, and I was looking for something for that reason that you just described with cutting away the little rip cord and the jacket, because I was just using a small scissor and I said, nah, I got to get something better. And I wish I would have, I wish we would have talked ahead of time because uh, put that link down in the chat, please. <laughs> I will. Yeah. So. Yeah. And well, and I don't have Amazon affiliates, so I, I really should just tell you all these things and let you do the affiliates for these, but, um, <laughs> but yeah, I'll, I'll put them in the description of the stream. Um, so I'll find this, but yeah, I mean, you could get, you know, a couple of these and, and stick them in different, you know, different tool bags you have. So, so yeah, I, I've been, I've been happy with them. That's awesome. Thank you. I was looking for yeah. something that small. And so, all right, awesome. let's do one more and then uh, go to our, probably go to our guest. Yeah, that sounds good. Cool. I'm going to switch to my overhead. Hopefully you guys can see this. Okay, yep, so what I good. what I have here is a cable identifying system. It's from cablesupply.com. It's about 60, 60 bucks, 69 bucks. And what it is, is if you ever find yourself in a situation where you get on, onto a site and nothing's labeled, right? You have no idea where anything is. Nothing's labeled at the rack. Not, none of the data drops in the locations are labeled. This is a lifesaver. It could also be used in even pulling like new, new runs, you, you know, a lot of times I'll mark the runs, I'll number the cable and then I'll number the box the same on the other end so that I know what run is what. But even if you don't do that, this is a lifesaver. So it basically, they're little, if you could see it, they look like little RJ45 modular plugs, but they're not, they're LED lights on one end and then the modular plug on the other end. And the concept behind this is, you plug all of these, you get 24 in the pack, you plug them all into the patch panel. And then if you're working with a partner, you can send your partner to the actual drop locations with this device here. And what you have to picture is, I wish I had a patch, an old throwaway patch panel to show you, I would have just rigged something for you. But the concept is you plug all those little LED lights into the patch panel, and then you communicate with your partner on the other end, he's in a room and when he plugs that device into the port the led lights up on the patch on the patch panel so you know which port it is what patch panel it's on and then if you're talking over a phone or a two-way radio kind of setup then he if he's got a label with him then he just can go right in and label the port and then poof move on to the next one so it is it's 69 bucks but it's worth every penny when you get into situations when you're trying to 
wow. figure out what's what. And it, it, yeah, you can tone things, but I think it, you move a lot faster than toning. So I, it's one of my favorite tools. And it just, again, the whole idea of what we're sharing today is to make life, make the job easier, right? Make life work smarter, not harder. Yeah. The Tony, that's freaking awesome. I've never even heard of that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, um, I'll drop the link. Hold on. In the- yeah. That's right. I mean, for 69 bucks. Yeah. That's because there's constantly you're trying to, I mean, yeah. This, especially the, the stuff I'm doing, you know, things never, nothing's ever late. I mean, you know, <laughs> you end up get, getting to somewhere and you're, and you end up spending so much time working on that, you know, trying to figure out what's where. So that's, that's pretty cool. Yeah, and Alonzo says a toner. You know, he uses a toner. That's um, what, while you're finding that link, I'll, I'll read a few uh, comments and questions from the chat. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Dremel. Stephen G, welcome. I had terrible luck with the Harbor Freight outlet cutter and I hated it. It kept rattling off. Yeah, it's probably hit or miss with, with Harbor Freight, depending on the, you know, depending on what you, what you buy there, right? It's like some things. <laughs> Some things can be cheap, like a fish stick. There's nothing to it. It's a, it's just a, you know, it's a stick. Uh, let's see. Ashley says she's all done. Thank you. Yes, my my ceiling camera is no longer shaking. James Weezer flush cutter. That's 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 the other flush cutter. Have the same too. Uh, also good for uh, for cutting after soldering on circuit boards. Yeah, good point. Unky Joe says hit the like button. Yes, thank you. Alonzo Smith, mm-hmm. Allie. AliExpress for these tools will take about three weeks to arrive to the U.S. Yeah, I've I've looked at AliExpress for a few things, but then I, you know, I, I come, I'm kind of an instant gratification person. Waiting three weeks for for anything is, you know, I'll probably have a whole new <laughs> hobby in three weeks. By the, so, um, Irfan says looking for a land tester that does POE and all the good stuff. Any recommendations? Preferably something that does not need an app on your phone. Hey, Tony, <laughs> you, you might have something that might help. <laughs> Me. Oh, oh, I thought that was maybe something you were you were going to show today. Um, oh, I, you, you I might thought, have a rec- a, on a land tester. Oh yeah, but I thought you. I thought weren't you going to? I have something. Yeah, I have, but mine is mine is not quite a land tester. Gotcha. You, I think you had, but we can we could sh- we could show it after. I'm going to just flip the my camera over to the top down for a second. I'm just going to hold up the untwist tool because it's about time that we bring up boris if he's signed on let's take a look yeah it looks like i see him in the waiting room so uh so yeah i guess before we bring him this is uh this is boris the founder and creator of the untwist tool let's hope he's decent hey there hey. he is hey boris <laughs> he's connecting he's connecting to audio boris can you hear us okay i can how are you guys can you hear Good. me we can yeah we can hear you we can see you and I'm awesome. gonna click over to, to YouTube and make sure that uh, make sure that that looks good once it pops up in the stream. But yeah, thanks for uh, thanks for joining us today. Thanks for inviting me. Yeah, welcome. We're excited to uh, have you demonstrate your tool and tell us a little bit about yourself and kind of how you found the company and how you came up with the idea, you know, in general. So just you know, take us through it and then let's see a little demo. Yeah. yeah, that sounds good. So yeah, I, my name is Boris Braun and uh, I am the founder of the Untwist tool. So I used to work as a network technician a couple of years ago. And uh, while, you know, the main job, you know, most of the network technician, basically, you know, you are terminating the wires all day long, especially if you're working in the data centers or if you're building racks and stuff like that. So, and um you know, there's a lot of low, you know, low voltage tools uh, that are being created for stripping the network cables. Uh, then you have like a lot of <clears throat> line of punch down tools to punch down the keystones and patch panels. You have like a, a lot of other stuff for, you know, different processes of terminating and uh, crimping and punching down the, the network cables. But mostly when it comes to the untwisting of the twisted pair wires, you would use, you know, your fingers or in certain scenarios when your fingers get tired, you would use like a piece of cable jacketing so you can make that part a little bit easier. You would use a flathead screwdriver or a lot of other stuff that people would come up over the years. 
just to make that process a little bit, you know, easier and faster, easier on hands. So I just didn't want to accept that. Didn't want to accept that fact. So I um, started thinking about this process and uh, I probably actually uh, for the fact, I know that I had 22 different version of the tool that I was developing and designing for this wow. particular task. So the 23rd version is actually the one that I can probably call uh, the untwist tool. And um, I'm sure a lot of people saw this so far. So basically this is it. It, it is the, a simple 3D printed tool that has um, grooves on the side that are basically made to straighten the wire. There's six fins inside that are basically designed to separate the twisted pair wires inside of the network uh, cable. And uh, it comes in two different versions. It comes as this, the, the four millimeter or five thirty second inch version that basically is made to fit any uh, precision screwdriver. And if you use it with the adapter, it will fit just the standard quarter inch socket screwdrivers. So um, that's basically it when it comes to the, um, the tool itself and uh, how I came up with the idea. And, uh, you know, I can uh, now quickly show you if you would like the termination process. Absolutely. Okay, so from, so there's basically two types of, uh, I would say ends that the network cable has. The first one is with the RJ45 head. The second one is with a keystone jack. This is like when it comes to like, sometimes you are terminating and punching down the patch panels. This it's the same principle as the keystone jack. So I would put them in the same group. So there are two fundamental differences between these two types. Uh, when you are terminating for the keystones, you, uh, you always want to keep the twist to the pair and the twist itself as close as possible to the posts so you avoid the crosstalk. So if you're terminating keystones and you have like one or two, you know, I don't think you actually need any tool. Your fingers are fine. You're fine with your fingers because you're actually not untwisting all the way. The half a turn method that I'm going to demonstrate um, in, in next would work just fine. But if you have, like in a lot of scenarios, people in the data center would literally punch down probably a hundred runs a day, your finger will get tired. And I know that there are different methods how people like to, uh, you know, how to terminate these, but I, I can even, you know, and I'll demonstrate how you can use the untwist tool to speed up and make this process easier. When it comes to the RJ45, the process is almost the same always. No matter what you do, you need to make the wires in a certain order and they need to be perfectly straight. If you're using the RJ45 EZs or the, the old school RJ45s, the process is the same. The wires need to be straight and they have to be in a certain line. So, you know, when you're putting the, you know, the head, so it goes in smooth. You can, you know, you, you, you will, you need to cut the wires with a, with a, a scissors or clippers on a certain angle when you're using the RJ45 EZ. So it goes through the holes easier. But again, like I said, the prep work for that is the same. You'll have to strip the jacket and so on. So I'll uh, demonstrate both versions if you guys don't mind. So um, the first one I have here, uh, Cat 6A cable. And please let me know if I go uh, you know, down so you guys don't see what I'm doing because I, I'm, I'm sometimes I lose the, the basically where the camera is. So I'm not gonna go into details like cutting the separator in the middle and, and, and all the crimping process. My goal is to show and demo as fast as I can how you actually are separating and twisting these wires. So 
to start with, I'm going to use just the regular precision screwdriver. So when you have the CAT 6A or CAT 6 or even CAT 5E cable, sometimes here, I'm not sure if you can see it at the top, the wire is pretty tight. So what I've seen so far, people are using their fingernail to separate this and then squeeze in between the fins and then start untwisting. That's not necessary. The point of the untwist tool is to use your fingers, you know, less than you would usually. So when it comes to these specific wires, you would just hold the wire like you normally would. And then you would come with the untwist tool only on a, like on a, just a little angle. As soon as you hit the top of the twisted pair, you would turn the counterclockwise and you would apply a little bit of pressure. So as you can see, I'll pull the, the tool out now. The wire is already being separated. So you don't have to use your fingernail at all. So I will just bring this back again. So basically it's a little bit of an angle. You apply some pressure and you slowly twist it. Now there are two ways how to untwist the wire. First one is the one that I really like is I will go slowly all the way down and keep in mind, you, you don't want the untwisting process to go inside of the jacket. Like if you can stop like right here, that's great. So what I like to do now is basically I would use my thumb and I would squeeze the top of the untwist tool and the bottom of the wire and I would pull backwards. The wire is almost perfectly straight and I would use the grooves to make it even straighter. So this is it. I would apply the same approach to all four pairs. The other way how people like to use this is they would not even go all the way. They would keep the untwist tool at the top and they would just untwist like this. And this is already untwisted. They would apply the same process to all four pairs and then they will use these grooves to make the wire straighter. That's basically when I'm using the, this little precision screwdriver. To speed things up, I'm using the battery powered wow stick precision screwdriver. And um, the process is the same. It just, it's a little bit faster. I would still come on an angle and I would, as soon as I, I'm, I come to the wires, I would separate them. And as you can see, the wire is already down where it should be. And now I will basically do the same thing and make the wire straight. Like I said before, some people don't want to go all the way down. They want to untwist all four pairs at the same time and then use the grooves to separate them, which is here. And the wire is untwisted. The twist did not go inside of the jacket because you can control it. And the more you do, you, the better you become. Like it's a, like an every, everyday tool, you know? So basically this is it when it comes to, you know, the process of putting these wires in, in, you know, in proper order and cutting the plastic and putting the head and crimping, that's, that's easy. There's so many other videos there where people can see this. So I'm not gonna waste time doing that. So uh, this is when it comes to RJ45. And now I will, uh, show you my method when it comes to the keystones. And uh, I'm not sure, I, I remember we spoke uh, about if I can share a photo while I'm talking about this. So I'm not sure how to do that. So if you guys can guide me through the process. Yeah, it should be a, a share screen kind of at the bottom of your window. Let me see. Yep, and you could just... Uh... Click that, and then you'll be able to share your share your desktop and, and pull up those pictures. I, to be honest, I don't see that part, but um, I don't have any share button. No, but it, it doesn't matter. I'll try to explain as best okay. as I can, and then we can. Um, We can see if that's good enough. So when it comes to terminating keystones or patch panels, like I said in the beginning, if you have only one or two, 
it's not you know you don't have to un un untwist the wire or do anything basically you would you know just like when you're doing it you would come uh, let me I, I might need to cut this plastic here one second so basically when you're doing the keystones and um, you don't if you have one or two or you know few you don't have to do that you would I'm not sure if you see it. See, you would put it in this position, and then on the bottom of this, so, sorry, on the bottom of this, you would uh, just use a half a turn, and then uh, you would come with the wire on the post, right? So, and this is something that you know, it keeps the it keeps the twist as close as to the post. The untwisting part doesn't go inside of the jacket, and uh, that's something that it's a standard and it's really cool. And I, I 100% support this. Um, you know, you, you have to keep it. You have to avoid the crosstalk. So now why I think that the untwist tool can be extremely helpful in these situations as well is I'm going to leave this blue part is basically when you have uh, more than more than a few keystones to terminate, or if you have like a patch panel that has like 24 or 48 ports and, and, you know, and, if you need to do that every day, it, you, your fingers will get tired. So I believe that if you want to use the untwist tool, there is a really cool way that I like to use is basically when you, for example, have a patch panel that has um, actually 24 patch panel that you can you know, insert 24 keystones. When you bring all the wires, like with a cable comb and like if you, if you situate them properly in the rack, you would have them all aligned through the through the patch panel. Then the next step, what I like to do is basically I would mark where I need to strip those wires. So then in one run, I would strip all 24, for example, uh, network cables. Then if the network cable has that plastic separator, I would go in one run, cut everything, all those plastic separators. So then when it comes to the next step, what I would do, I would use the untwist tool basically. And then I would hold the bottom of these wires, twisted pair wires. And when you're holding like this, so basically you have like a half inch on the orange and brown pair, and you're basically holding just the bottoms of the green and blue pair. When you're holding like this, you have the control with the untwist tool, for example, like you would go and you would stop here and you would stop here. And as you can see, the, the twisted pair is still like probably like even a quarter uh, in three quarters of an inch uh, twisted. So that actually, when you untwist all 24 uh, network cables like this, you have them already prepped. Then in the next step, I would basically get my keystones ready. I would basically just do the process of putting them where they, where they should be. Like just putting the wires like this, for example, inside of the, I'm not sure if you guys can see inside of the keystone jack. And basically the untwist is, the untwisted part is still really close to the post. This part after you punch it down will get lost. So then you have all 24 ready for the punch down process. Then the next step in one run, you punch 24 of them in the same time. So once you have them all punched down, you can literally set them, set them properly inside of the panel and you're done. You can put the zip ties in the back. And I wish I had, wish I can send, uh, share the photos with you at the moment, but I, I don't know what, I don't know. Yeah, I can, I'm not sure how to do that. I, but I'm, I pulled, I'm pretty the, sure I pulled them up. Oh, yeah, you did? I, let me see if I can share them real quick. Yeah, yeah that would be, uh... be pretty cool. Let me share my uh, my desktop. They're a little bit small, but uh... yeah, basically that's that's it. So basically, the photo on the left, right? So that's basically where I have them all aligned, and I made made the marks. The first one on the right is where I have them properly aligned. Then I made the mark. Then I would strip them, and the next step on the left 
I would separate those. I was uh, separate using the untwist tool, separate those wires. And then I don't, I'm, I didn't have, I didn't send you the photo where actually I would put all the keystones in line and then uh, punch them down. So basically that's it. This is how the end product looks. And uh, it's pretty convenient, to be honest. It, it will take some time to get used to the new method, but I think it's, it's, it's definitely beneficial. And it, it is when, once you get used to the new way, it will definitely save your fingers in the long run <laughs> and, and time, to be honest. Uh, it's just that it's not like, I don't, I, honestly, I don't like doing one by one, you know, and I, I just don't like it. I think it's, it's super cool. Have them like, you know, you, you, because you are basically using, for example, you're using one tool at the time. So I don't have to like strip, put the tool back, get the clippers, cut the clippers, then get the keystone, then do this and then punch down with the fourth tool and then clip it in and then put the zip tie. In this is the, in one run, I'm literally doing everything with one tool. As soon as I put the tool down, that tool is done. I don't have to go back and forth many times. So for me, I'm not sure, you know, I can argue with people that, you know, for me, it is saving time. And it's T Tony, what was yeah. your experience using it? I have to tell you, um, I can attest to the fact that it, it, it does save the fingertips. That's for sure. And um, I loved it. I, like I said to you guys I, earlier and, and on social media a couple of weeks ago, I, I absolutely fell in love with it. Um, after the first on twist, I was like, oh, wow, this works. And I don't have, I don't, I didn't use it on the screwdriver adapter. I don't have the little battery operated um, tool either. I just have the untwist tool and I just, it took me, it took me maybe three, three to four um, uses to realize that I didn't have to initially untwist the pair, yeah. right? Um, I realized it took like by maybe the fourth or fifth crimp or fourth or fifth untwist that I could put it on the angle. I stumbled across that and then it just kind of went from there. It was super, super good. Worth every, worth every penny. And by the way, I am giving away two of these. So, and courtesy of Boris. So thank you, Boris, for sending me those two. I did buy my first one. No um, and then I did ask Boris, I said, hey, you know what? Let me do a giveaway. And he was like real cool about it. So um, if you haven't already entered the giveaway, the link is in both our chats. It'll be in the description of this video once it's posted. It's also on my website at quicktechsolutions.com. I'm seeing some comments in the chat basically saying, I want one, I want one, get me one, um, ordered, et cetera. But you can also, there's a chance to win. I'm giving away two of them. and We only have seven entries so far. So uh, make sure you hit that uh, entry form. It's, it'll be open for a week. It's closing on next Saturday, uh, the 13th at 1159 PM. So, okay. Any, any restrictions, idea. Tony, of, of where, where you can get it. Thank you, Joe. Countries? So you got to at least 13 years of age, right. So to join the, um, giveaway, uh, I'm going to open up the, the giveaway is open to everybody, everybody worldwide. However, due to some of the shipping regulations, I'm going to ship in the United States only. And if I do get an international winner, I'm just going to uh, PayPal you the uh, retail equivalent in U.S. dollars of what the tool would cost. So it'd be fair to everybody. That sounds great. Yeah, yeah and Boris, thanks for thanks for going through that. That's pretty cool. I mean, it, you know, it's cool that it's also a a, a small business and that you know you you saw kind of a challenge in in the industry and uh from your own experience and and made this thing so um and and i guess one question so you sell this on your website you also sell something called the wow stick that was that battery powered um i guess what what's uh what's next do you have any other what's what's the future of untwist tool <laughs> so because you know i um like i said in the demo with a keystone uh i don't like because you have to go through so many different tools in order to uh, finalize the keystone process, punch down keystone process. With RJ45, you do have those uh, cool crimpers, right? That can uh, cut the jacket, that can basically um, cut the separator in between as well. 
the process where you would untwist them, you can use either the, your fingers or, or untwist tool, but you have the, you know, the, the place to crimp, the, I mean, the, the end of those tools, usually to crimpers to crimp the RJ45. So, and again, a lot of people, will, they, they basically said, it would be awesome if you can, in, you know, integrate the untwist tool inside a crimper. So this is the idea that actually I am trying to solve. And um, so that, that is the next step. So I am developing mm. untwist tool integrated in the crimper. So that's pretty cool. That's awesome. awesome. So that, yeah. So then, you know, if this is something that it's pretty challenging because even like I, I want to mention that I did mention that this is 3D printed with the, using the uh, multi-jet fusion technology. So this is how I'm actually achieving those tiny tolerances. Uh, so this was not possible in like, I don't know, five, six, or even, you know, more years ago, because the, most of the stuff that you see, it's, you know, made by injection molding technology. So, you know, you can't, you can't, I, I could not make this with that. So now what I'm facing is the, the, whatever I'm trying to achieve, it will be, you know, 3D printed or stuff like that because it needs to be super small. So it doesn't make those crimpers bigger. I just right. want to have them like, because there's a certain standard. I want to be in the standard, but I want to incorporate the tool inside of that. So you have only one tool when you are like doing the RJ45. And then down the road, if you know people start using the untwist tool for the keystones, uh, I would come up with the idea to incorporate that in a, a punch down tool. I've seen around there's like a really cool. Uh, I would I'm not sure how would I call them, but the tool that would punch down all like the whole keystone at once, not. So you can go with a one punch down yeah, to yeah. go one by I think one. Cody, uh, Mac Telecom, who's on here, I think had that in his video. Yeah, he's got one of those. Yep. Now, th those are amazing. Yeah. So if, you know, that's one of the, like I said, yeah. it's it's pretty challenging, but I'm, I'm trying to figure out the best way how to incorporate the untwist tool yeah. inside of the crimper that's, without that's awesome. making it too big. You know, hey, hey, I, Boris, I want to make sure we get your social. Oh, go. Sorry, Tony. I just want I to make one, sure that the social media went before he before he's done. Go ahead, I had Tony. One quick question for you, Boris. And I know you touched upon it when you first came on about that. This, you know, you, there were several revisions until Correct. you got to this model. 22. Um, 22. So you had a <laughs> bunch of prototypes. What yeah. was just timeline start to finish? I mean, how long from the point you got the idea to you got the final product through the prototypes what was how long did it what, how long was the process i'm just curious and it's, if you said it's this about earlier, a year and a half it's about a year and a half but then then it's about a year and a half to get to the 22nd i would say and then it took me a little bit of time to figure out the 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 the, the, the final version to be honest so about a year and a half i would say okay Thank and you. uh i, get, I have a to give a shot go ahead. oh go ahead. go ahead go ahead sorry I wanted to give a shout out to the, um, the actually Nantucket Networks and my uh, buddy Matt and my buddy Luke. Uh, we um, actually, they, they were the ones who literally said like, you should not stop with this. Like, this is a great idea awesome. and just keep on going. And um, yeah, so they are like, they, are, they were like, basically they were like pushing me into this because it's, it's, a, it's a problem that, that needs a solution. Well, so yeah, you, I think you should definitely continue. This is this this is awesome. So, somebody said if they wanted to become a reseller, do, do you offer um, do you offer that kind of program yet? Uh, they can contact me anytime. Like my, um, you did mention about the social media, so you can yeah, find us. I like on, your Instagram. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we are on Instagram. It's a um, Untwist Tool. Facebook is the same. Untwist Tool. Uh, we got Twitter. But they're not much on Twitter, to be honest. <laughs> and uh, it's an info at untwistool.com. Shoot me an email and uh, we'll go from there. So if you have, uh, if you want Boris to 3D print you something else, just send him a note and he'll <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll, come up with the design, right? <laughs> we'll come up with that design. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah. Uh, and, and, and one last thing, Bob says, uh, let Boris know from us ham fisted, large handed people, you're saving us a ton of frustration. Thank you. <laughs> that's, that's the other, if, if we have, if we have like a moment or two, I would like to mention that now, especially with the COVID times, a lot of like people have to use gloves, right? So, uh, even like when you're working outside, for example, people who install cameras in the middle of the winter, you know, like you can now use gloves and with no issues, like untwist and separate those wires mm -hmm. properly uh for people who are like have to use the ppe equipment at all times that's right. awesome what i found out it's like a lot of people got the car carpal tunnel syndrome with like just doing the constant repetitive work it's not fun so this definitely can help out with that people who are recovering from stroke uh people who actually have some nerve damages like they will they are able to get the you know like uh, the proper dexterity on, on it it's it's i think it's pretty cool it's just that it's, it's you awesome. gotta used to it because there's there was nothing like this in the past and people just like got used to using the uh, at least this was this was this is one of the reasons why i started you know like i'm using the cable jacketing and i'm like literally using this and separating the wires and like using them squeezing it and then so yeah i mean yeah People tried, I guess. So, so well, Boris, yeah, before, go, go ahead. Sorry, Tony. Before you close it up, close that up, Joe. Uh, I, I have a question, kind of not a question, just uh, maybe we could have a, you guys could shed some light. Wax IT asked me, you know, what is the problem with shipping outside of the U.S.? And I mean, I'm not 100% sure. I know there are some limitations and regulations based on regions and things like that. And it's all outlined in the U.S. postal regulations, which I do have listed in the official rule giveaway. But Joe, I don't know if you could shed some light on that. And, and Boris, I, you, I, can. I, know, I noticed I you can. ship only to the U.S. as well. No, no, no. Oh, no. OK. I sh we ship worldwide. And we it there's when it comes to, from my personal experience. I didn't have any issues at all. Like I'd ship to. Uh, Ireland, England, Australia, quite often, to be honest. Australia is, uh, I'm not sure, but they are ordering like crazy. Okay. And um, there's actually uh, one of uh, the people who um, I sent him like five um, samples. His name is uh, Mick from uh, First Point Comps, and he's yeah. on Instagram. He's a great guy. Yeah, I follow so, him. Yeah, he's a great guy, and um, he's actually, I think he's the reason why a lot of people from Australia are ordering like crazy, and uh, I don't have any issues shipping worldwide. It's basically that the only problem is that it's cost. It's like, for example, to ship to Australia is around $17, and when you think about it, the Antwist tool is $18. It's, you know, and yeah, right. the difference between Australian uh, dollar and, um, I'm not sure if it's Australian dollar, but Australian money and US dollars, there's like conversion stuff, so it's pretty pricey for them, but they still order That's it that's the biggest challenge is the, is the pricing. It's, you know, you, it'd be better to, to get the PayPal if you're in Australia. Right. And, and also I think there's some giveaway rules that we looked at for when we did the tech quartet, where there's, there's rules in different countries about how you can give stuff away and what the contest needs to be. And it, exactly. it, it actually is, is more complicated than you wish to think. Um, so, so sometimes it's easier just to send you 19 bucks and you can order it from Boris. <laughs> so, <laughs> exactly. So, no, it's, but, it's uh, yeah. It's the money is the only issue. I wish it's yeah. cheaper because people will definitely like, like I said, you know. <clears throat> sorry, uh, I send everywhere. Like basically, uh, Ireland, like I said, uh, Sweden, Norway, Hungary, Serbia, like all everywhere, South America. Awesome. It's it's people usually like they don't even have any issues with the customs. Everybody got it. It takes like a month. To be honest, <laughs> yeah. here and there, sometimes like but, for yeah, England, right. for England is only two weeks. Canada, Canada, a lot of stuff goes to Canada, which is great. Yeah, good old customs. But all right, Boris. Well, we we really appreciate you coming on. This was really cool um, and great job making this thing. We have a few more tools we're going to show um, before we wrap up our stream. So, but uh, but appreciate it. And and remember, check out un untwisttool.com. Check out Boris's uh, Instagram, Untwist Tool, Facebook, Twitter, and uh, and drop him a line. Thanks again for coming on, Boris. Appreciate it. Thank you guys for having me. It was a pleasure. Thank you, Boris.
Thank you. Appreciate yeah. it. Absolutely. Have a good day. Take care. Bye. You Bye. too. Bye. Let's see. I don't want to report Boris to Zoom. I just want to. I just want to <laughs> remove. <laughs> All of a sudden, Boris won't be able to ever join a Zoom call again. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. Um, yeah, no, that, that was pretty cool. And, and thank you, Tony, for kind of, I, I saw this on your Instagram. That's how I figured this thing out. And I was like, what the heck is that? Yeah. What is Tony? Uh, what is Tony up to? So it was, but, uh, uh, but yeah, I'm not a big, well, I, I had, I was never a big Instagram user. And recently I've just kind of turned around and tried to, you know, generate more views to the channel and things like that so i've been using it more often that was probably one of the more popular instagram um posts that i put out there so uh yeah no but a great tool he's a super nice guy as you guys can all tell yeah. so but. looks like we got a, he got a bunch of orders i'm looking at steven g bob uh steven g ordered the wow stick too so uh that's awesome cool yeah yep Awesome. And we have, yep, the entries in the contest are up there. They're growing too. So that's cool. Cool. Awesome. Awesome. Well, t Tony, do you want to do, do another, uh, another one of yours? Sure. Why not? All right. So let me flip over to the overhead. And some of you probably know what this is. It's the ideal um, FT, FT45 pass through crimping tool. And uh, again, for me on the job, just makes life easier because it just crimps and cuts all in one action. Here's the little blade right here. Now mine's a couple of years old and uh, I actually have to thank Willie Howe for turning me onto this tool because um, ever since I got this guy, I, ha I haven't had a bad termination. It's just 100% spot on all the time. And, and I'm serious about that. I had a, just a regular traditional crimper and I would have certain crimps that I would ended up having to redo. But uh, this this thing, I, for whatever reason, I haven't had a bad crimp with it. My blade's a little dull, but uh, it's about time to change it. But the whole concept is you just, you take your RJ45 mod mod modular jack, you got your wires passing through, and you have to use the pass-through jack. You can't use a regular modular jack. You just insert it like that. Let's see if you guys can see it. Hopefully the blade will cut them all, but just, yeah, see, I, I need to replace my blade, but the concept is it just cuts. and You end up with just the perfect crimp. Um, I will say, no, I, I take that back. I had one crimp that went bad uh, about three, four weeks ago, and it ended up, wasn't the tool, it wasn't me, it was the actual RJ45 modular plug. When I finally went back after the, cable didn't pass the test i finally went back and checked everything i noticed that in the actual plug itself you probably can't see all the little metal pins the eight metal pins there was actually one of the metal pins missing in the plug so the plug itself was defective so of course the wire was open but uh this thing has been wonderful it's it's a small form factor it's got a little flap that locks it just go right into a pouch nice and easily and you saw that my blade is on the dull side. They do make replacement blades. They're about 10 bucks a blade. They're available on Amazon. So I'll just put the link to the tool and the blade, you know, in the video description and on the chat. So there you go. Love this tool though. It's one of the best I ever bought. It's about 55 bucks on Amazon right now. That's, that's awesome, Tony. Cause I, so I actually strayed away from making my own terminations for the longest time and still I, until I started going to the pass through just because my fingers are too big. I, I just can't. I don't know how I've seen, you know, guys who do do this all the time, like low voltage uh, people, you know, do this for a living and they can just fly through them without even the, the pass through. I don't know how the heck they do it. But so I, I actually bought um, a Klein tools one, but I like the one you have better, to be honest with you. This is much bigger. And it, it it's you know I don't know it's it's kind of, uh, kind is of that a bit clunky. Is that a pass through and a cutter? It is, yeah. Okay, it's got the trim right there. Um, but I think I I think I like yours better. I think they were about the same price. Um, but it's just another another uh, another option. But I think the ideal. To, so so Willie, I remember Willie likes the ideal as well, right? Yeah. So. Yeah. 
Um, cool. Awesome. Have you, so some people say about the pass through that you shouldn't use them outdoors. You shouldn't use it with POE. You shouldn't, what's your take on that? I'm, I haven't had, had any, a problem. I haven't had a problem, but I will say you shouldn't leave them. <laughs> like you shouldn't leave it outdoors where, I mean, mine's starting, this one's old and it's starting to rust a little bit because my bag sometimes is left in the back of my pickup and the pickup cover isn't 100% waterproof. So if it rains or I go through the drive through and I forget my tools are back there, um, that little crimper is paying the price for a couple of car washes, but yeah. Gotcha. Oh, I, when you said drive through, see, my mind instantly goes to McDonald's. So I'm, I'm thinking, <laughs> and you just made me hungry. So thank you. Um, oh, you can't do that. Remember, you're in that competition with. Uh, I am. I am. I was. I was down another 1.6 pounds today. So what's this, 14 point something pounds? So trying to get healthy, Tony. Um, I wish I. I wish I knew about that competition when you guys started it because I, I really need to. As I was telling you before the stream, I wish I was part of it, but uh, I'm going to start. I have to. Well, you, yeah, we, it's hard to tell that, that you have gained anything because you, you still look like you're, yeah, no, um, Anywho. but, uh, yeah, anyway, so, so Cor Cordell, see. hold on one second, oh, Cordell, Cordell Reimer, uh, from the Virgin Islands just joined the stream and Cordell, um, you may have to watch it on the replay, but, uh, you missed a lot of good content and, uh, welcome and make sure you join the giveaway for the Untwistle. Awesome. Stephen G says he's got the client and loves it. Um, and uh, does yours does yours have the ability to strip the jacket? Stephen saying, or no? Mine? Yeah. Uh no, no, no. Okay. It's it's simply just a crimper and a cutter. Okay, got it. And then Bob says, with outdoor settings, cover the ends with dielectric grease. Uh, was Willie's advice. Yeah, I remember Willie saying that. That's right. Dielectric grease. I got to get some of that. Let's take it off my forehead. <laughs> um, any more Any more comments you wanted to read, Tony? Before I... uh, I'll watch, I will watch from the beginning, Cordell says. Thank you. <laughs> and walks it said wa walks not walks it wax on wax off wax it says thank you for the <laughs> clarification on the, the shipping you see tony's got a good sense of humor his videos are so are so uh like organized and good that that uh you know it's good to have these live streams tony where people see that you're actually <laughs> you're actually a pretty funny guy they should see us when we're off camera together <laughs> I, I know seriously that's yeah. you know, we, have we have to a do good the time. patreon only you know type of thing <laughs> so. so oops all right so the next i guess i could do probably both of these together um so i guess let me preface this so when i when i first started punching down keystone this is a keystone jack for those who don't you know know you probably all know but these go into a either a wall jack or into a patch panel and, you know, you saw Boris put them in and so you can get these and you buy them individually and you have to you take your punch down tool. If you don't have one of uh, Cody's fancy tools and there's basically a, a, a longer side of blade and you put the cables in and you, you punch in. Well, so many times I end up poking myself with the punch down tool because I'm trying to I'm up on a ladder and I'm trying to put the keystone in or whatever, um, or I'm in a kind of a precarious place and I'm holding this thing and it's hard to to do that and, and this is an, called an impact tool right so because it you know it's impactful it pushes it into the the hole so so you can really jab yourself in fact i think tony said that that he recently jabbed himself <laughs> so um yeah. go ahead yeah you no i just i'm acknowledging oh, okay. yep <laughs> okay so so anyway then i came across i first came across this which is it, i think it's from cable matters which it's, it's a simple little tool, but it's got different grooves and you can pop the, the keystone in to the slot and it's, it sticks right in. And then you could either put it down, you know, on a surface or whatever, even if it's on a vertical surface and punch it directly into this thing. It just holds the keystone where it is. So it doesn't wiggle around. So that was the first iteration. These are less than $10. I think there's maybe six or seven bucks. And then I found this guy, which is actually a palm version where you can put the you can put the keystone into um into this guy 
course I haven't used it for a while, but basically you put this in, I forgot how to forgot how to do it. Oh, I guess right, right here, put it in like that. And then you can, you can hold on to it with your, with your palm. So it's, this is another cheapo little thing. It's got a cable holder. They're only a few bucks on Amazon, but it has saved, you know, it's rubberized around. It has really saved me. It's got your 568B uh, termination colors there. And uh, yeah, so, so this is by Leviton and it's got a little rack, uh, rack mount. I haven't seen that either, but anyway, so, so those are just, so, so Tony, did you, uh, did you stick yourself? How did you stick yourself? Um, well, I actually have two of those cable matter holders. These ones? And, yeah. yeah. And sometimes I use them and sometimes I don't. And I was just, I was finishing up. I was on my last Keystone Jack, the last cable, the last conductor. And I was holding it up against the wall and boom, the, the tool slipped, the punch down tool slipped and missed and went right into my index finger. Eh, so anyway. Long story short, I uh, when I saw Cody stream on that um, all in one shot uh, Keystone punch down tool, uh, I ordered it. In fact, it's sitting at the PO box after the stream. I'm going to run over and pick it up because uh, that was a little painful, and I ended up having to get a tetanus shot. So uh, use something. Don't do what I did. You know, I was just trying to get done, finish up quickly, and I slipped and paid the price. But uh, yeah, stupid mistake. Yeah. Yeah, I think I'm going to order that from from Cody's um, affiliate link because that that looked really really slick. Even just the time too, because you have to go through and get you know punch them all in. Not, with to Cody's, you just put them all in in one shot, right? It's, it's exactly. It's it's a big tool, right? I mean, it's not compact like the crimper that I showed, but I think it's just well worth rather than having to punch down eight cables. You know, boom, boom, right. boom, boom. So do it all in yeah, one shot. Absolutely. So. Well, cool. I have I have one more item, Joe. That's about it. I don't know. Did you finish? I have one more too. Oh, okay, cool. So we've been talking about crimping tools and pass-through jacks and keystone jacks. And one tool that I find works well for me, and it's it's not a high-end tool. It is the Klein VDV 52 526-052 cable tester. It's the Land Scout Junior. Now, Klein makes a bunch of bigger brothers, and they're a lot more expensive. This is just your basic um, testing tool. I mean, you can see, again, you, if you haven't figured it out by now, I like things that are like compact, that are easy to fit in the bag. And I do have a couple of other testers that are toners, all-in-ones and stuff like that. But when you know the cable is good or, or you know you're pretty confident and you don't have to go searching for a cable and you just want to get a quick pass on a cable, this guy is wonderful. I mean, the, the module, the satellite module just sits right in there. So you can't, you know, it's, it's hard to lose because I'm good known for losing things. And it's just a one button press. And it just basically tells you pass, fail, open, miswire. Um, again, 55 bucks on Amazon. And it's, uh, again, nice and compact, does the job, goes right in a pouch easily. And, you know, I, I love it. Again, work smarter, not harder. And I, um, it's not a certifier. And trust me, I mean, certifiers could be like thousands of dollars. And the type of work that I do, I do small, you know, small businesses, boutiques, uh, small offices, mainly residential. Um, I'm not, you know, required or certifying cables like with the fluke certifiers but uh to make sure you have a good cable that that's works great so will that actually tell you which pair i see the numbers on that does that tell you which pair is bad if there's yes. a, if there's a yeah okay. it'll tell right, you cool. yeah yeah and the nice thing about this one a lot of the others like i have one that you have to have somebody on both ends to watch the lights to make sure all eight lights light up right you you can't you can't take it for granted that if you see all eight conductors light up on your end, that it's good on the other end, right? And when you're working mm -hmm. by yourself and you're using like that other test that I'm talking about, when you're working by yourself and you're, okay, this side is good. And then you're running to the other side, wherever that is across the house or whatever, and crap, one's open, you know? So 
This one shows you both all in one screen. So from you're not running all over the place. And it's it, again, working smarter, not harder when you're by yourself, which is really one of my favorites. So. That's awesome. Yep. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I like that. Any, uh, any questions in your chat? Uh, let's see. No, we had Cordell join. We had Jacoby from San Jose join. Um, welcome, welcome. Uh, make sure you guys catch the replay. Uh, Cordell said, I ordered it after seeing it on Cody too. Oh, I guess he means the um, all-in-one Keystone crimper. Yeah, uh, I'm looking forward to using that. Cool. Awesome. How yeah, about you? When we say Cody, it's Mac, Mac Telecom Networks is, uh, is his YouTube channel. He, he's doing, he's cranking out the ubiquity videos, all good stuff. <laughs> Guys I have to machine. tell you, he is. And, yeah. and he, and his channel is growing and, and more power to you, Cody. Um, happy for you. I remember when, you know, he was like at 5,000 subscribers and I was at 11. He's like at 14 and I'm still at 13. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> he's just on the move. So, um, good job, Cody. Keep it going. Yeah. So. Yeah, Willie was talking about it earlier. It's like you get backed up, you know. It's like it, it's all. It, it comes down to it comes down to time. It's like we. I think we'd all love to probably do do more, but yeah, yeah, absolutely. Let me put the um, link to that Land Scout Junior in the chat. Yeah, Irfan says I almost bought a Platinum Tool Easy Crimp on Amazon, but many comments and reviews say they are fake. Always see reviews before buying. Yeah, absolutely. Well, that that's the nice. That's part of the reason why we want to do the stream is these are things that you know we we've actually used um, and like. Especially Tony's out doing this more than I am. Um, you know, I do more of the home networking stuff and just some side projects with it. But but Tony's really, you know, out there <laughs> in the world doing this stuff. So. Sometimes more than I want to be. I'm supposed to be retired and just enjoying retirement. But this is a passion, so. Yeah, yeah, but believe it or not, Tony's <laughs> retired. I know he looks good for for what for his age here. The digital life, welcome. Hey, thanks for joining. Christian. Christian's another one whose channel is uh Christian has a channel about like basically uh pipe, you know, different coding and uh wire guard and all kinds of different, you know, Linux stuff. And cool. Um, yeah, another channel. He, last last time I looked, he was at a thousand subscribers, and I just checked and he's almost at six thousand. So it's amazing. It's great, it's great, uh, great people are because you know, we need more people in it you know willie always says that too we we need more people learning it and it's not you, you're only going to learn so much and get going to college for it you know college yeah. you know you're an educator former educator you, i believe in education too but you also need hands-on experience and and you need to be able to do projects and stuff you see so 100 percent mm -hmm. so uh yeah i'm gonna do you have any more or do you want me to show you my my last i'm good joe it's all yours all right, cool. And then while, while I'm showing this, if you, if you have any questions, I guess engagement challenges, as they say on some other channels, um, whoever's channel you're watching, put in number one, what was your favorite of the tools? Um, and what's your favorite tool? And, and by the way, if you're watching this afterward too, put it in the comments, what's, your, you know, what, what do you use? Because well, I've, I've learned a few things just from just from talking to Tony here today. So I'm sure there's other things that are out there that maybe we don't know about um that uh that you use so so yeah throw it in the chat what's what's your favorite what do you use and if you have any questions for us so while i'm showing this last one and then we'll we'll do we could take some questions after this so cool and um, vice versa joe i learned a lot from yeah. you since we've since we've met so thank you yeah that's, that's, yeah thank you so uh so the last thing i have is is this this little it's not quite as cool as the as the client tool you know uh tester but this is a a cheap poe detector and i got this because about a year ago i was playing around with some passive poe and uh what i realized is i could very easily fry some equipment pl plugging a non-passive poe device into a passive poe um jack that happened to be turned on for that so what this thing does is you know let's say you're going to plug in a, a voip phone or an ip camera or something that's that's poe um, and, and you're, it's a random Jack, you're working in, on a job site or at a, you know, at a, um, uh, office building or something. And you want to just see, does this Jack have POE before I fry my $300 device that I'm about to plug in, you plug this thing in and it, and it lights up. Um, so, so green solid is passive POE 24 volts, blue solid, passive POE 
or passive 48, uh, 56 volts. Flashing is uh, 802.af or AT, and red solid is uh, is reverse, which I've I have not seen. I don't, that's that's above my uh, my knowledge of PoE what that means, but but uh, but yeah. So this was just this was like a few bucks, and it it can go on the side of your of, of your work bag, and you know it's it's just tiny. It slides right in. I mean, it could even go on a on a keychain or something, but I don't know that you know. I don't know that you're that nerdy and into cabling that you want to put it on a on a keychain, but uh, but yeah, it's super yeah. light and it's uh yeah, kind of nice little tool. Hey Joe, have so. you um? I have a question from uh, Jacoby. Jacoby, I'm, I hope I'm not butchering your your screen name, but uh, have you ever played with any of the Firewaller project uh, products? Let me bring them up on the screen. I have not. Um, that's why I was wondering no. if you have. Apparently, no, I, they, I've heard of them, but yeah, they're they're pretty cool looking. Yeah, next generation cybersecurity. Obviously, they have um, affordable 100 megabit, 500 over 500 megabit, and then the gold security made simple and powerful. Interesting. That's something we might have to uh, check out together. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the, the interesting thing about uh, I agree. The interesting thing about firewalls is it's you know that when it comes down to it, it's, if you didn't open any ports and you didn't, um, if everything was closed off then you know, most, most firewalls are, are fairly similar, right? It's just it's blocking unless you establish the traffic from, from inside. Um, but, uh, but you know, there's, there's different threats that, that come up all the time and, and certain ports you have to have open and certain, um, you know, if it's, if, for example, if it's like, if you have a VoIP phone system and you have something that's like SIP aware, we were just talking about this, you know, I, I do a lot with the telecom stuff at work and there was a customer who wanted to put firewalls in front of what's called an SBC session border controller. And the session border controller is made to be able to understand how to open and close, uh, like UDP ports and have that, that VoIP traffic. Whereas the fire, like a regular old FortiGate firewall, um, you know, is, is more traditional and it's not made for the VoIP. So it's, it depends on what you're trying to do, I guess is my point where it, it's not, you're not going to just automatically be safe by buying a particular brand of firewall. Um, you know, you, you really have to think about the, the whole picture, the whole picture of, of security and what ports are open. Like I just moved away from, from doing port forwarding for my blue iris stuff because, uh, I found a, a, a new solution, which I'm going to be doing a video on and, uh, you know, it's, it's, I'm pretty excited about it. So anyway. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. 100%. I'm going to check that out. I'm going to maybe buy the, uh, the, the little guy and maybe play with it and eventually do a video on it or something. But he says here, uh, again, Joe, Jack, Jack Gooby, he says, uh, Jacoby, Jacoby, maybe, um, he has it and it's a nice, he's transitioned from the edge router and he, he really, he really loves it. Um, he's got the firewall, firewall of gold, deployed it in my network. And when comparing to the edge OS and unify UDM or the like, it's a day and night different. Interesting. Wow. Good to know. Okay. Cause I, I I'm a big fan as, as well, you know, Joe, I'm a big fan of the edge router line. So, um, that's what I pretty much use in all of my residential and small business installs. Um, I'm, I have a U, USG in my lab. Uh, I've never bought into the UDM line even from the get-go, even when everybody was all hot on it. I just never saw the direction. I wasn't understanding the direction that Unify was going in at the time. But uh, I'm, I'm big on the edge line and uh, been wanting to play with uh, PFSense and OpenSense. It's, again, it, goes, it gets back down to what you said earlier, time. <laughs> so... Yeah. Well, that, and actually that was what I was going to say to Jacoby is, or, or however you say your name. Um, <laughs> have you compared it? Like what, what, how does it compare to a PF sense or open sense? Cause you, you have guys like Bob Carpenter who are, um, you know, and, and Willie likes open sense. It's like, I'm, I'm curious. A lot of people go like the interface of that too. So is the uh, firewall, uh, that would, that would be an interesting video. If you do, you know, if you end up doing comparing all three of those, Tony, the yep. edge OS, PF sense, open sense, and, yeah, that would be really cool. I'd have to get on top of a couple of those. Like I said, I never used, I've looked at PF Sense. Um, I've watched a lot of Tom Lawrence's videos on it. So, but uh, I, the interface just, I mean, I really, I, I appreciate its power, right? I really do, which is why I want to learn it. 
but I just, the interface just, for me, it's just standoffish. It's just, it overwhelms me a little bit. It's, I don't find it as streamlined as I like it, would like it to be. But, so Yeah. Well, that's uh, like the Microtech stuff. I bought one of those Microtech and, and it's cool, can do a lot of things, but I'm still not comfortable. You know, I'm still getting through it and, and learning the, the UI. So cool. Well, Joe, we're going at this an hour and a half, and we kind of figured the stream might only go an hour, maybe. So, uh, yeah, maybe I, have, we I have a few more questions, questions here, and then maybe we'll start to start to wrap it up. Cool. Um, so Bob bought an Untwist tool favorite. So Irfan says the favorite thus far is the Untwist tool. Awesome. And and uh, Christian from Digital Life says what? Uh, who was the special guest? So it was the founder and creator of this little device called the untwist tool for untwisting uh, pairs of category cables. So definitely check out the replay. If you want to see that, you, you'd probably be interested in that Christian um, Winfield Evans. Welcome to the stream. Please do look into the firewalls as a noob need experts like you to weigh in very little good information out there on the gold. We will, uh, we will take a look. I think, I think uh, Tony's already on it. Yeah. And we Ferris, might have to reach out to firewaller and see if they'll uh, send yeah. us an evaluation unit. <laughs> so, yeah, I know. Seriously. Uh, Ferris Mustafa, those firewalls are awesome. I started with the blue and then got the gold. Love them for my kids. Uh, study from home, total control. So, so maybe the parental controls is, is uh, probably, you know, the UI for that may be a good thing to test. Digital life looks like a nice device for home stuff. Jason Lowe, curious what your new video is relating to instead of port forwarding. Yes, and and it's it's uh, pretty exciting. It actually works really well. So look out for that. I'm gonna try to. I will try to film that this weekend. I I, ha I have a whole bunch of videos on tap here <laughs> that uh, Ferris Mustafa. You need to be expert for PF Sense and Open Sense, but firewalls make it simple. Or firewall makes it simple to use for non experts. That's cool. Stephen G, thanks for the informative stream and costing me money. <laughs> uh, no, no problem. And Christian says, sure, thanks. Yeah, no, this was really fun, Tony. I, I mean, I have to say this, Tony, this was this was your idea. I know you'll probably say no, 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 because you're a humble guy. But um, I, I had more fun than I expected, to be honest with you. This this is pretty cool. <laughs> so. And no, it was fun. It was fun. Um, a couple of just a couple of comments. Um, and thanks, Joe. I appreciate mm -hmm. it. It's, I love working with you and have a good time yeah, when we're offline too. and yeah so all right let's see uh jacoby says yeah this thing rocks and the customer service that's good to know is extremely responsive and usually respond within an hour of questions awesome bob carpenter says left the edge router for pf sense best thing i ever did cordell says thanks i will give my comment after watching the entire stream uh, Jacob Ethan says that Bob Carpenter, PF Sense is a great, is great, but the learning curve is a bit steep. I have it on the protect, I have it on the protect leaf for a while too. And, and I guess there is, there is a learning curve to, to PF Sense, but that, that's not what's keeping me away from it. It's more just the, the UI. I just don't like it, <laughs> but a hey, to each his own. Um, Bob Carpenter says that. Jacoby, I agree, but I've learned all about the edge router stuff from Willie. And by the time I'd gone down that rabbit hole to learn about firewalls, it wasn't too big of a stretch to move to PF Sense. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, I may have to give it another look. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, so yeah, and people are thanking us for the stream. So, yeah, th thank you all for joining us. I think this this has been a, a really uh, really good time and. Like Willie said this morning, we're going to probably try to to expand out. You know, we had the tech quartet with uh, Unky Joe's Playhouse, Tony from Quick Tech, Willie Howe, and myself. We initially did that. Now we're going to try to expand that a little bit. And and Willie's got some good ideas on that. And Unky Joe basically just bought the domain, the the uh, what is it, the Nat Nat Kings or something, Nat King Cole? I don't know what's called. I have, <laughs> I have no else. idea. I have no yeah, idea. whatever it is. We'll figure. But uh, but yeah, so so go check out all their all their channels too, and and Mac Telecom, and also uh, Unky Joe's Playhouse, 1 p.m. Central, so that's 2 p.m. Eastern, so about uh, what an hour and a half from now, Unky Joe yep. goes live, and and he is one funny guy. I mean, he is he is hilarious. That's I I swear that guy <laughs> should have been a comedian. He's freaking awesome. So check out yeah. his stream too. So good guy. Anything good else, content. Tony? That, that, <laughs> 
No, I mean, people are just thanking us for the stream. And uh, yeah, I had a good time. Thanks, Joe yeah. and Tony, for a fun live chat today. You guys rock. Love your shows. Bob Carpenter, excellent stream. Thanks. Well, thank you, guys. Appreciate your yeah, time. Thank, thank Taking you time out of your day. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So. Very cool. All right. Well, then I, I guess we'll wrap it up. Thanks again, Tony. We'll, we'll both click end on our streams and look out for our future videos and uh, future kind of collaborations. Absolutely. On three, Joe. One. One, two, two three. Three. <laughs>